Dr Cooley and Dr Reed would like to welcome you to Lecture 1 on the topic of an introduction to plant physiology. This lecture is the first lecture of the subject plant physiology, which is a component of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology. This degree is offered as a partnership through both Melbourne Polytechnic and La Trobe University. Please visit our website www melbournepolytechnic.edu.au for information on this course and other courses that we offer. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. We are going to discuss several things in this lecture today. We are going to start with an explanation of why we are studying plant physiology. We are then going to define plant physiology and describe how this subject will be taught principally as a journey through the plant. We will examine the subject learning ob objectives and look at the recommended reading. I will describe how this subject will be assessed and we will complete this lecture with a subject checklist. All agricultural systems are underpinned by plants. Whether this is directly by the growing of a crop or indirectly by the use of plants for, say, animal or fish feed, they are essential to this enterprise. In theory, in order to optimise your commercial outputs, say, for the best wine or for the best beef production, understanding how a plant grows and develops will significantly contribute to your agricultural endeavours. This subject aims to explore the fascinating and complex world of plants, and give you an in-depth understanding of how plants grow and develop. The content of this subject is evidence-based where knowledge has been gained through research and experimentation. In this slide we will look at how you can study for this subject. You have a total of 10 hours per week assigned to this subject and using Moodle as your guide you will start with lecture 1 and follow the lectures in the specified order. Once you have completed each lecture, a quiz will follow. This will enable you to demonstrate your knowledge or highlight areas where you may need to review the information. We have observed that students who tend to pass this subject and do well in it, use the provided quizzes as a learning aid. Each quiz passed will allow access to the, following, to the next lecture. Where complex themes or theories are presented in the subject, some lectures will contain links to short videos. Past students have said how useful these have been in improving their understanding. Each lecture will be accompanied with a handout, a list of links to be used and a selection of reading. Readings are an essential process and will be highlighted. There are readings that are not essential to passing this subject, but will allow in-depth knowledge if the student wishes, wishes to pursue. Experimentation will be conducted in two parts and allows concepts of plant physiology to be explored. The first set of experiments will be conducted in a DIY style. At the start of the subject, one of these experiments will be conducted on a wheat plant. You will be given a wheat plant and you will keep this alive throughout the experiment. This experimentation will be on carbohydrate partitioning. You will make observations throughout the experiment and write this experiment up at the end. The second stage of experiments will involve intensive workshops over two days. The proposed dates for these are in Teaching Week 8 on the 13th and the 14th of April 2013. So let us define plant physiology. Plant physiology is a wide, wide scope of contents and can cross many disciplines. As a result, there are many definitions. For this purpose and the purpose of the subject, we are going to use the Taze and Zeiger definition of plant physiology that states it is the study of function encompassing the dynamic process of growth, metabolism, 
and reproduction in living plants. To investigate plant physiology, such disciplines as biochemistry, anatomy, genetics, biophysics and molecular mo bi biology may be explored. The most basic of terminology in this subject is to define a plant. According to the Oxford Dictionary, a plant is a living organism which is typically growing in a permanent state of the kind exemplified by trees, shrubs, herbs, grasses, ferns and mosses that absorbs water and inorganic substances through its roots and synthesizing nutrients in its leaves by photosynthesis using the green pigment chlorophyll. The image on the slide from the Glossary of Herbs by Plant Parts by Maple Tree iTunes is a basic image that identifies many of the plant organs. The principal anatomical parts that many of you will be very already familiar with are the roots, shoots and leaves. If we start with the roots, you will see that there are principally two types of roots, primary and lateral roots. When these are examined in detail, you will see they contain root hairs. On these root hairs is a root tip and a root cap. The vascular tissues, which is a structure that's located predominantly in the stem, are where the xylem and the phloem are situated. The vascular tissues, xylem and phloem, are regarded as the transport mechanism of the plant. This is where water and nutrients are transported. The vascular tissues lead to the leaves. The leaves are the, are the location for the very important process of photosynthesis, also called assimilation. This is where light energy is converted into chemical energy. We think of this chemical energy more typically as sugars. These sugars are transported around the plant and used immediately or as long-term energy stores. Plants also contain reproductive organs, illustrated here in the form of flowers and fruit structures. In the previous slide, the basic structure of a plant was reviewed. In this subject, understanding the function or a role of a plant is enhanced by observing the organs that aid this process. In your provided practical books, Practical One Plant Form and Function 1 and 2 gives you much more detail on this topic. Information can be found in this practical. After you have watched this lecture, please complete your first DIY practical. You will need to complete the associated task with the practical to complete all the information in this topic. To complete your studies in, on this topic, you are required to read the following four articles. A Botany for Gardeners, an Introduction and Guide, written by Brian Kappen. The Taze and Zeiger 2010 Recommended Textbook, Chapter 1, on the topic of plant and cell architecture. The Plant Physiology Practical Handbook that comes with this subject. Practical One on Form and Function. And finally, the Reading in Tutorial One by Reinhard and Guzimai, Plant Architecture. The following article on plant up architecture, a dynamic, multi-level and comprehensive approach to plant form, structure and onology is a text that we recommend you read if you wish to gain in-depth knowledge in this topic. However, please note this article is not essential reading for this subject. In plant physiology, your journey through understanding the physiology of a plant will be conducted in two stages. The first stage will be an adventure through the plant. The second stage will be in-depth investigations into growth and development plant defence and nutrition, all components that are essential for commercial production of plants. So let us look into more detail about how the journey through the plant and our lectures will be constructed. 
Lecture 1 will be an overview and an introduction of plant physiology. Then we will start at the roots. We will look at root structure and function. In Lecture 2 we will look at this specifically with respect to water and in Lecture 3 we will look in detail about nutrient uptake. Both of these very important functional rules in plants and agriculture. We will then travel up through the roots into the xylem structure, which is one of the transport vessel's very important structures. We will look in detail about the structure and the function of the xylem. We will then follow the xylem further up into the leaf structure. In the leaf, water and nutrients can take two pathways. The first pathway leads them out to the atmosphere. This is the stomata. In the stomata, water is lost. It is not lost intentionally, it is lost as a consequence of the plant requiring carbon dioxide for the process of fixing energy. We will then follow the lecture on transpiration. Here we look in detail about how water moves through a plant. We will then go back to the water journey. We said earlier that the water can either travel through the stomata or it can go to the photosynthetic organs. In lecture 7 we will look at the process of photosynthesis. We will start with the light reaction. The light reaction is where the plant is able to capture energy created from the sun and convert it into chemical energy. Lecture 8 will explain how the plant deals with this chemical energy. Through a number of reactions called the carbon reactions, the chemical energy is converted into energy in the form of sugars. This is useful energy for the plant, as it can be used immediately or it can be transported or translocated through the plant in its various forms. The phloem is the structure that translocates or moves around the sugars and we will be looking at the structure and the function of this organ. And finally, through the first stage of our journey, we will end back in the roots where we started and we will look at carbon carbohydrate partitioning or the storage of energy. In the second stage of this subject, you will learn about how the plant uses the above processes to grow and develop. Lecture 11, how they use nutrients, Lecture 12, and how they control growth and development with sophisticated signals called hormones, Lecture 13. These hormones also aid in defence. This knowledge will be brought together in a concluding lecture where we will introduce to you how plants might respond to changes of future climate conditions, Lecture 14. In this lecture you will have an opportunity to test your understanding of plant physiology. There are five learning outcomes for this subject. The first three are the most essential and where most emphasis will be applied. These are to investigate and describe how plants function and identify as ways in which environmental factors can influence plant physiology and growth. You will learn how to describe and explain the basic terminology of plant morphology, taxonomy and physiology. And you will apply physiological processes of plant growth to plant management of a selected crop, pasture or vineyard. The following slide gives a list of the requirements you will need to complete this subject. The two that I suspect will be the most important are access to noodles, so that you can look at the lecture material and complete the quizzes and the subject checklist which you will find at the end of this lecture. There are a number of recommended texts and literature. The prescribed textbook for this subject is the Taze and Zyger 2010 Plant Physiology 5th edition. We do not recommend that you go out and purchase this as there are copies in the library that you may borrow. There are also online links to this textbook. 
past students have told us that this textbook can be found in other languages and so far we have heard that it can be found in Chinese and German. In the past, some students have struggled with the Tate and Zeiger recommended textbook. If you are finding that this is the case, a good alternative is the Atwell, Credeman and Turnbull text written in 1999 on plants in action. Another text you may find useful is the Bell and Hemsley 2000 Green Plants, Their Origin and Diversity or the Hopkins Introduction to Plant Physiology. Stern et al. in 2003 also gives a nice and simple introduction to plant physiology which may aid in your overall understanding. This subject is accompanied with many online resources. These can be found in your lecture notes, in your tutorial exercises, in your practical books, or you may be given journal articles which are associated with the topics for you to read. We will always identify which journal articles are essential and which are placed there for additional depth and interest. This subject is delivered in a flexible learning format and as such, time management is essential. It is your responsibility to manage your time accordingly. You should expect to do on average 10 hours study per week for this subject. During these 10 hours, you will watch lectures, conduct your DIY experiments, complete your associated Moodle quizzes, and read the literature recommended with each lecture. Contact hours will include weekly tutorials. These will be discussion based and will start with discussions on each lecture. Therefore, it is essential that you watch the lecture before you come to the tutorial. After discussions on each lecture, a task may be presented in the tutorial to help with your understanding on the topic. There is a two day intensive practical workshop accompanied with this subject. Your attendance is compulsory. The dates that were suggested for this workshop were in week 8, Sunday the 13th and Monday the 14th of April. These dates have been selected due to the flexible learning format. For some students this subject may be challenging. It is recommended that in order to pass the subject you watch all the lectures within the guided timelines, complete all quizzes and review and repeat where required. Complete all practicals and associated readings. Past students have suggested that planning their time was very useful. Please ensure that you complete lectures 1 to 10 within the first six weeks of this subject. You must complete lectures 1 to 10 before the practical workshop sessions commence in week 8. In order to pass this subject you need to acquire a grade of 50% or more. The following table, which is found in the student, student subject outline, is a summary of the assessments. This subject is assessed by three methods. The first method is completion of a plant physiological management plan. This is due in week seven. The second assessment comprises of two practicals. The first practical is a DIY. This practical, you will collect the consumables for this in your first week or second week. You will conduct the DIY practical over an eight week period in your own time. You will complete a number of exercises associated with this practical and you will email the completed exercises to Alistair Reid on or by week 11. The third assessment for this subject is a written exam. The exam is worth 40%, the two practicals together are worth 30% and the plant physiological management plan is worth 30%.
Please note there is a rubric associated with these assessments and they can help you complete this assessment successfully. You can find the rubric in the student subject outline. A rubric is a descriptive scoring or marking scheme. This can be used to help you get the best grades. All rubrics are available on Moodle. While the quizzes are not assessed, we do feel that they are a very important part to students being able to test and examine how much they know in this subject. Feedback for the quizzes are instantaneous, that is, as soon as you complete the quiz, you will get the feedback. Look at the questions, look at what you get wrong and what you get right. If you get a number of questions wrong, go back and revise that part of the lecture. It is recommended that students repeat the quiz until they have obtained 80% or more. The March Practical Reports and the Plant Physiological Management Plan Assessments will be returned within two weeks of their hand-in date. If a practical assessment or a management plan assessment is handed in late, or an extension is given for the report, then feedback over a two-week period from handing cannot be guaranteed. During Assessment 1, the Plant Physiological Management Plan, which is worth 30% towards the subject grade, you will find the details associated with this plan both on Moodle and in your student subject outline. You will also find them in your lecture handouts. For this assessment, a crop needs to be selected. That is, if you go to the student subject outline, you will see a table with a number of pro crops suggested. You select a crop to which you will write upon. Selection will be based on a first come first served basis. Each student, importantly, must select one crop only and you must confirm the selection of your crop with the coordinator, Alistair Reid. Ideally, all students will have selected a crop by week two. The assessment deadline is early on in the subject, being week seven. So please ensure that you are organised with the correct crop assess uh, selection. In assessment two on the practicals, the details are already uploaded in Moodle. As described previously, there are two parts. Part one is the completion of the practical book. This needs to be handed in in week nine on the 28th of April. Part two is on carbohydrate partitioning experiment. Each student will be provided with some wheat plants at the beginning of this subject. Please contact either myself or Alistair if you do not have your plants. There are a number of ways that a student can get assistance for this subject. After you have watched the YouTube videos of the lectures, there will be associated tutorials and workshops which complement the themes and theories covered in the lectures. It is important where possible you attend both the tutorials and the workshops, as this will significantly help in your understanding of this subject. Even with this extra help, if you feel that you are struggling, please schedule a time with one of the lecturers. The coordinator is Alistair Reid and he is more than happy to meet up with students who may be struggling. We recommend communication via email as this allows a very responsive um, process for us. There are a number of resources which will significantly help you through this subject. The first is the Plant Physiology Lecture Handouts. You will, be, you will be able to receive a hard copy and an electronic copy which will be available on Moodle. In the Plant Physiological Lecture Handouts you will find the Student Subject Learning Guide, the Learning Objectives, details of assessments and dates due, and a copy of all the lecture notes covered in this subject. A very important section in the Plant Physiology Lecture Handout is a section called Why Study Plant Physiology? 
I strongly encourage you to read this before you commence any other exercise in this subject. This section outlines how we communicate in the subject and what you can expect to learn in the subject. It goes into some detail about the structure of the subject too. I have put together a checklist to ensure that you have all that you need to complete this subject. It is very important that you have internet access and this will enable you to access the Student Learning Centre of Moodle. Moodle is administered by Melbourne Polytechnic. If after the first week you do not have access to Moodle, it is essential that you contact the coordinator Alistair Reid to ensure that you get access to this resource. All communications for this subject will be conducted through Moodle. Therefore, if you do not have access to Moodle, you may miss out on essential information. In Moodle, you will also be able to receive links to lecture videos, lecture handouts, the important learning resource Moodle quizzes and information on tutorials. It will give you the details of the DIY practical and other components of the practical workshop. You will also be able to download the associated material Why Study Plant Physiology the document that is in the handouts. There are 14 lectures in this subject. There are approximately 13 tutorials. There is a two-day workshop which will be conducted in April which is essential for your attendance to pass. Please note all students will need to attend the workshop and it will start on a Sunday and continue on to the Monday. You will need to complete a number of DIY experiments as part of the DIY practicals and you will need to complete and hand in on time all assessments. When you start, in order to, for you to complete the assessment of the DIY workshop, you will need to pick up a DIY kit. If you are doing the subject by flexible delivery, you will first need to send an email to the coordinator Alistair Reid with your contact details, which includes a current address for the first and second week of the semester. If you are doing the subject via the internet, uh, the flexible delivery, and you have registered, you will receive a DIY kit. If you are doing the subject face to face, that is that you come into the campus each Monday as per the timetable, then you will receive this DIY kit in your first week. If you miss the first week, do not worry, but please ensure you contact one of the lecturers to ensure that you get the kit in a timely manner. It is your responsibility to ensure that you receive the kit. There are a number of components once you receive the kit. You need to check that you have all components. You will receive in the kit six wheat plants that will be put in one container. Some of the containers may have more than six plants. If they do, then please weed them out. We do this deliberately so that when plants are shipped out, if a few die, you will still have a guaranteed number. You will also receive some slow release fertilizer. This will be provided in a child proof container, but please keep away from children. You will need to supply tap water on a regular basis for your plants through the experimentation period of approximately eight weeks. You will be provided with small microscopes. These are called the DIY microscopes. There are two versions. One version plugs into a PC and the other version plugs into a phone with a camera. If you have, do not have a phone with a camera, then please ensure that you let Jennifer, the technician, know and she can provide you with the correct microscope. You will be given a microscope slide kit. This will contain between six and seven slides. You will need this for the form and function section of this practical. You will be given a plastic bag and tie. This is for the transpiration prac. 
you will need to provide a scissors or knife as part of this prac for the carbohydrate partitioning experiment. <clears throat> you will need to download from Moodle the electronic lab book. This is where the assessment and tasks for the assessment need to be completed and submitted. In essence, there will be two pieces of information you will need. One is the DIY electronic prep book and the other is the electronic lab book. Both of these will come from Moodle. This is the end of the checklist for this subject. This is what the DIY Prac manual looks like and the DIY electronic practical report template. Ensure that you have either a hard copy or electronic copy of both of these. The final associated literature with this subject will be a workshop practical manual. You will be given this by the lecturers at the workshop. Remember the workshop practical dates are Sunday the 12th and Monday the 13th. Please note that we will start relatively early, between 8.30 and 9 in the morning, and go through to about 5pm, therefore they are full days. I really hope you enjoy learning about the concepts of plant physiology. This is a very important subject for agricultural students, and particularly those that will be doing agronomy and or viticulture and winemaking majors. This brings us to the end of the first lecture of this subject.